Around 10,000 Australians live with a spinal cord injury, people with paraplegia and quadriplegia. Now, many say they feel trapped in their own bodies because going about even the simplest of daily tasks presents major challenges. But what if they could harness their thoughts to propel them through the day? Well, Paul Willis gets wired up to check out the latest in hands-free wheelchair technology. Yeah, it looks good. This is what it takes for Mark Tonga to get out of bed each morning. Three carers and half an hour just to move a few metres. Since smashing two vertebrae in his neck during a rugby training drill two years ago, Mark has been paralysed from the chest down. The moment his injury has really changed my life. Okay. When I had his injury, I woke up and I looked at my options. And there was no options there, you know. Now, moving anywhere is a challenge. But without his powered wheelchair, it would be near impossible. This is my office, eh, as they say. To get around, Mark uses a variety of controls that require blowing, breathing and intricate facial movements. You know, you come home and you want to kiss your wife or your girl. You know, you don't want to... You know, you get a bar there and they just, like, get turned off, you know? In Australia, around 200 people a year sustain an injury that results in quadriplegia. This wheelchair shop in Sydney stocks all the latest high-tech chairs, catering for disabilities like severe spinal cord injury. Some of them are quite complicated. They actually Professor Hung Nguyen is a regular visitor, looking at ways to improve control systems and make life easier for people like Mark. And this one here is the sip and puff method of control. It's actually, there's a number of different technology here. You know, the sip and puff, the chin stick, oh, the chin and stick. the head move. Yeah. For the past decade, Hung's been on a quest to design the ultimate wheelchair. They have a number of different other techniques now, but I would like to actually make life a lot easier uh, for people with disability to control things. And this is the chin control method of controlling a wheelchair which is not only counterintuitive and somewhat difficult, it also makes it very difficult to talk while you're doing it. There's got to be a better way. And Hung thinks he's found it. Get the wheelchair to do the thinking. So who's driving this wheelchair? No one. It's navigating its way through the room all by itself. Hung calls it the smart wheelchair. This wheelchair actually has a laser system. It can look at the front and it can see the free space and try to avoid obstacles. The idea of this one here is actually provide safety for the people with disability, but the people with disability will have the control. I'm controlling this wheelchair with my hat. Just a simple nod in the direction I want to go, and the chair does the rest. An onboard computer interprets the visual information from lasers or cameras and creates a 360 degree map that helps steer the chair. I'm amazed at how much fidelity there is in the movement of this thing. I've only been in it five minutes, but I feel I can control it. But how does it work? If you look under your hat, you find that there's a device in there and with the wireless communication it communicates with the embedded system here and that in turn control the wheelchair. Hung has replaced all the facial control paraphernalia with a wireless accelerometer the size of a garage remote. But Hung has already moved way beyond this system. What he's working on now will blow your mind. So what have you done to my head? We hook you up with a number of different electrodes. If you look at back there, you actually can see your brain wave. So this is quite literally reading my mind. Definitely. Electroencephalography, or EEG, is a technology used to detect brain signals, and it's nothing new. But using it to control machines with the mind is a dream only just being realised. 
Last year, researchers at Honda showed thought recognition technology could be used to move a robot. This uses a multiple electrode EEG hooked up to a very large machine. But Hung managed to simplify the process. We can get by with one or two electrodes. So just a couple of electrodes provides enough information to operate a wheelchair? Yes, definitely. We simplify that DAO to this sort of level and it's wireless. Special software will translate my thoughts into directional commands for the wheelchair. There are four basic actions. To roll the chair forward, I imagine a Rubik's Cube rolling forward in my mind. To move left, I compose a simple letter. To move right, I think of doing some arithmetic. To stop, I just close my eyes. And now, to put it to the test, can I really move across this room with just the power of a thought? Nothing happens at first. But then suddenly, I begin to move. Using a simplified version of the thought control technology, my brain signals are directing the wheelchair around the room. Well, it takes a little getting used to, but I'm amazed at how quickly this machine has learned to read my thoughts in order to control it. And while I might see it as a little bit clunky, I could see that for a severely disabled person, this system is going to be absolutely liberating. It's all about getting close to what we used to be, you know? Where there's no miracles, but, you know, the closer we are to you know, what we used to be as, you know, the better. And if you think what you've just seen is impressive, stay tuned. Hung is now working on a thought-controlled car.